if we want to identify the origins of the more abstract design logic of visual surveillance. We could trace to the English philosopher Jeremy Bentham's concept of the panopticon, which was visualized in 1791, nearly two centuries before the first publicly installed CCTV system. As an architectural model, the panopticon was designed in a way in which the prison subjects would be aware of an invisible inspector and their own constant potential of being watched, which in effect moved them to self-regulate their own behaviors to avoid punishment. Here, the philosopher Michel Foucault famously argued that this panoptic logic was a common model of governance for the social institutions that were steadily emerging in Europe since the 18th century. Various forms of such institutions, such as prisons, schools, factories, and asylums, are managed through an underlying philosophy of panopticism, which is a combination of being seen by the unseen authority, punishment avoidance, and self-discipline. A setup aimed to produce docile bodies, that is, people who have been trained to intuitively act and think in specific ways within a given institution. In the case of schools, for example, this means keeping silence in a classroom, talk only when you're given permission to, admitting the teachers as the authority for the measure of your worth, and so on. These habits are trained or internalized through spending years in such environments, under the surveillance gaze of the teachers, the superintendents, and sometimes the police, to the effect that once people graduate from such settings, they will still act and think in disciplined ways without the presence of surveillance. This is, in Foucault's term, the main feature of the disciplinary society, a panopticon internalized in the societal scale unconscious.